show committed to equipping you to hone your media skills better to stand out from the crowd as a go-to expert in your field. Each week, Rich Montreger interviews top leaders, influencers, authors, speakers, podcasters, and media professionals about how to leverage media best to help you shine brighter on camera and stage as a go-to expert. Now, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Montreger. Welcome back once again. It's Sunday night. Rock the Stage is back with you again. And we're always bringing you experts from around the world. Part of our mission in 2024 is we're going to go more global and more global. Tonight, you get the pleasure of going down under. Yeah, we're going down to Australia tonight. And we're going to have a great conversation. And it's all about mindset. And one thing I found out late 2023, there's a big struggle with people. We're all losing confidence. Our mindset has been shot about what to do, how to do it, when to do it it's become a bigger phenomenon. So tonight we're going to get into your mind. You want to stick around to be a part of the conversation here tonight. You're in for a treat. Before we get rolling with all that, we do want to thank our amazing sponsors that make this show possible each and every week. Adavita Studios. Adavita Studios will help you produce your podcast, your uh, audio books, and help you distribute to the wider market. Adavita's connecting your voice to the world. That's their pledge. For more information, go to adavita.com. And Suspiciously Convenient Productions is another proud sponsor of Rock the Stage. If you have a movie, a TV series idea, they actually help you bring it to life, take your ideas, and help you produce it. And if you want to learn more, SuspiciousConvenientProductions.com. But tonight, it is all going to be about mindset and mind shift. And we're going to poke and prod around and maybe help you out a little bit more than we started out the day with. And we're, again, going to Australia. Kathy DeMarcos is a driven by an unwavering vision to create global impact. She's committed to educating, elevating, and delivering what others fail to do. Her aim is to enable people to become a self-reliant, and her work is based on three core values, ethics, integrity, and respect. And through listening to what you say and hearing what you don't, she helps people and communities to unlock their past and recognize a world that is full of possibilities. She is known as the holistic medical doctor for business and communities with a background in banking, business, and a bachelor's of counseling and human change. She understands people. She understands businesses and communities. Well, let's welcome Kathy to rock the stage on this Sunday night. Great to see you, Kathy. Hi. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> what a joy. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun here because I do believe mindset is so important right now. Like I said in the opening, and I'm curious on this, this seems like people, we came out of COVID, we came out of shutdown, we got back at it, and it feels like now we don't know what to do and how to do it, and people are feeling it more than ever. Would you agree with that? Uh, look, it is incredible. Um, in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, people will actually divulge, divulge everything. Um, and it's an incredible privilege to actually sit in that space. But when it comes to just talking about what everybody's feeling, we don't seem to openly discuss it. And it is about that um, doubt. You know, I, you know, I feel like I want to do something. I just don't know what or I don't know how to do it. Just asking the questions, it all actually sits inside their heads and nobody actually asks for help. And that then perpetuates. Well, so, again, until you say it out loud, it's not real very often. So the first thing you got to do is say it, claim it, and be honest about it. But yeah. as you just said, people are afraid of giving it that voice, right? Yeah. Um, I often say to people, I think... We need to firstly understand the first time we do something is in, in actual fact the second time we're doing it. So when we're thinking of something, that actually becomes our reality. Our brain doesn't actually um, understand that it's not real. It's just a concept. And so every time you're telling yourself something or you're thinking something, and especially if it's actually around doubt, you are ingraining that into your everyday life. So the more that you actually start to bring what you're thinking out into the open, you then actually start to live it. So let's start talking about it. <laughs> well, again, this is a perfect time to have you as a guest on the show because 2024 for Rock to Sage, I'm committing this to be the year of confidence. 
because of how we are all wobbling. This is literally the year of confidence for microphone, confidence for stage, but confidence for your business. We're, we're all just feeling. So thank you for beginning the conversation here tonight. So what are some of those common phrases? What are those things that people you you do most commonly hear them say when they go, uh? Do you know, the, the most common thing, and me being, I guess, with my background is, uh, Kathy, numbers just aren't my thing, you know. And in business, if numbers aren't your thing, guess what? You actually don't know where you're going. Sorry. <laughs> That's actually very true. And again, I was late on that, by the way, with my own career. It's like the numbers will come, the dollars will come, the followers will come. The num and then someone sent me down and said, if you're not tracking numbers, you're not tracking anything, buddy. The, the reality is, is that, you know, most people go into business because they have this passion or they actually know that they've got a service, something that's not actually in the market and they want to make a difference. But... When you don't actually really genuinely look at the numbers that actually sit, you know, underneath that to, to create that foundation, then you are actually almost getting in a car and you don't have fuel. So you don't know how long you're going to last and you don't know where you're going to end up. Really simple. <laughs> Except you will run out of gas sometime, which people are experiencing right now. How do you get into this whole mindset world of, of, of being this? <laughs> holistic mindset guru expert. How did you get into this? Oh, it started, gosh, when I was in my 20s. It was innately, accidentally, I don't know what to call it, but um, I was in finance and it was through the global financial crisis. I had suicidal clients. So I was actually working with very high net worth clients, businesses, and sadly I had to repossess their business and their homes. If I couldn't actually dissect their business to work out where there was going to be continued growth to pull them out of that financial position. Um, we had to sadly um, do debt recovery work. Mm. I had a suicidal client. Um, she was a catwalk walk model and uh, she rang me really late at night um, and she was ready to commit suicide and all I, all I could do, Rich, was um, talk. I didn't know what else to do. You yeah. know, I'm in my 20s, out of my depth. Um, and, look, it was a positive outcome, but that made me realise that um, I needed to know more, hence my bachelor in, you know, um, counselling and uh, human change. So for me it was a holistic approach. That's where mindset started to actually take place. Well, and, in human nature, right? Well, and, and, and again, the, the, the idea of just talking or just listening, I, I said that in the open, you listen to people, both with what they actually say, but the real magic is what they're not saying. Yeah. And that's a true gift of being able to get there. And then you realize you're not saying this or your body language is saying this or whatever. And then you get into the mindset of the lack of the desperation, whatever it is, but listening to words and listening to the nonverbal words, explain that a little bit. How, how can we help people and how, how can you help us learn the value of hearing the unspoken? So I think, you know, as children, we're actually trained to instantly react. You know, we get asked a question and instantly we've got our hands up and say, oh, I, I can do that. You know, <laughs> But we're not necessarily actually teaching the people and young kids to look inward, you know. In what we're actually hearing, what are we actually feeling? Because there's often a dichotomy. We have been given the art of saying what we think people want to hear. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, we instantly blurb out what we think needs to actually happen. But in the breathing and listening in, you can actually see within a person the reality of what's happening for them. Yes. And it's capturing that moment. Well, and, and again, the, you know, mindset shift, we're, we're talking about the mindset shift, but the scarcity to abundance, again, some of us from young ages, just pick what you get. Don't reach for the stars. Don't, don't ever become a dreamer like Walt Disney, heaven forbid you do that, where it's like, no, it's fun to dream. So, this mindset thing of talking, listening to business leaders, it is a lot of body language and nonverbal language, right? Yeah. So, you know, 
um, at a young age, and it's particularly girls, you know, they're actually told, don't worry about that. You know, when you get older, you're going to get married, you're going to go down this path, don't worry about your numbers, don't worry about finances, don't worry about this. And so that's what you absorb. If you actually are down a path, you know, in business, oh, you're actually, your strengths are in this, focus on that. You're a left brainer. You're a right brainer. We just get given information. Like, yes. well, I mean, get put into, that about? I mean, we get put into a square peg or round peg before we even thought. And they kind of do tell us what we are. And then we kind of like, okay, I guess that's what I am. How many exactly. geniuses, how many CEOs have said, I stepped out of what everyone told me I was and I went to where my heart was and now I flourish. It's amazing how many people have done that, right? Exactly. I mean, I remember I remember back at school, numbers were my thing, you know, so everybody actually used to say to me, don't worry about English, you know, three unit maths, just keep going, you, you know, that's your thing. Interestingly enough, Rich, my highest grade was actually my English when I set my final exams. It was like, what just happened? Right. right. And and who would have thought I've written so many books, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, so, I'm yeah. trying to get my first one done, but yeah. That, <laughs> so what what is it that gives us this scarcity? I mean, there's so many people that have big locked up dreams, but they don't dare say them. Like we said a little while ago, why are we stuck in scarcity versus really stepping into it? What, what limits that walk into the door, making the phone call, whatever it is. It's actually, you know, fear has actually been um, instilled in us from a really young age. How many times were you told, don't jump off that tree? <laughs> or no. Yes, no, right? Um, what we don't realise is, is that we are automatically actually creating people to be fearful of doing something that they haven't done before. Um, you know, I'm going to actually give you an example. Um, that actual emotion of fear actually sits in the same part of your brain where pain is actually experienced. So F okay. fMRI studies, yeah, have actually shown that that actually lights up whenever we have any attachment to fear. It's like somebody is physically actually, you know, hurting us. Right. And so therefore we actually hold back. So that's what causes that scarcity, you know, oh, I've got to actually, no, I'm not going to try that because this is what will happen. And so it's recognising that simplicity thing and the realisation of and what, what, what happens if we fail? What's the reality behind it? Well, and again, it's never fail you if you're learning from it. You were just about to be my hero because, you know what, um, we keep talking about um, resiliency and this is another thing for me, right? Mm -hmm. But I say, guys, we need to actually step beyond resiliency. That's become such a common and loose oh. word that's been used. So I'm going to introduce you to something that's actually been developed by Nassim Taleb. It is actually an anti-fragile framework, an anti-fragile mindset. And the difference is between resilience and anti-fragility is that you actually strengthen from your failings. So you take away the lesson, yeah. not the emotion, because that's what we've been taught. We hang on to the emotion. Yes. But resiliency, what do we do? We go, oh, my gosh, I... I, I got through it. Yeah. But what does that mean? <laughs> right? What is it that you have actually been able to take away and go, you know what, this is something that for the next time I actually know that's my baseline, that's my new baseline. And then we actually build in what is called um, the framework of mitigating risks, right? So you actually have first-order thinking. If I do this, these are my options. Right. Okay, if you try this, that might happen. But if I do this, this might happen. And right. we do a second order thinking and a third order thinking and a fourth order right. thinking. Right. Which remember when I said right at the beginning, if you have in your mind already conceptualized something, your brain has automatically realized, oh, this is 
something that she's done before, even though you haven't. But when you go through and you mitigate risks, you have created already the process. So what happens is you then go into recall, right? Yeah. Because you envisaged it, your brain said you've already done it. You're, here you go. This is how you do it. So you start from a new baseline anti-fragile practices so one of the things with mindset conversation i've gotten into and i've had several guests in this area is some of them talk about the positive words the positive thinking which i get but i mm -hmm. don't hear them talk about some of the things you're saying about step into it and instead of just thinking about it having the positive affirmations on the wall you can do those all day long but nothing's going to happen until you get and step out of the boat and start doing something why are yeah. we not talking more about that? Why are we not talking about the mindset that goes with the action? Um, so I'm not quite sure that a lot of people quite actually understand it to that depth. So nobody ever talks about the how, Rich. Right. It's like, okay, it's it's all theoretical. To some people, it's woo-woo. It's very, okay, the mindset is all woo-woo. But it's really a call to action. Learn about yourself, I think. Learn about what you can do maybe don't even know you have the skill set for but it, it, it's it's not just wishful thinking which i think some people get stuck at so they're like i don't want to talk about this <laughs> yes right um people actually so when i look at financial literacy you know how many people say oh kathy i i just can't do it my response is well people just haven't shown you how you can do it in a way that you will understand. So let me do it. And the response that I get is, nobody's ever shown me this way, right? How? <laughs> Nothing is complicated. We just learn, we just need to learn how to communicate it in a way that people can receive it the way they need to. So I'm a natural big dreamer. I do identify with Disney and people like that because I believe in the possible dream, okay? Yeah. So I have big thoughts. Many people have big thoughts. Let's talk about some practical tips about how do you actually see yourself stepping in? How do you actually make the step? You are going to fall on your face. You are going to do it, but it's not a failure. It's a step in the process. So how can we really help them here? Rich, you know, my dream is to actually make people self-reliant globally. And people look at me and go, yeah, whatever. <laughs> we all want but, it done for us. We want everything done for us. We don't want to be self-reliant anymore. I want AI and Google to take care of everything for me. So please go on. <laughs> so, so for me, you know, if I listen to you, I go, that's actually great because what you've identified, Rich, is, is that there is something that you know that somebody else or something else can actually do for you and do it better. There's actually efficacy in it and there's efficiency. So you identify what is your place of genius? What do you do well that nobody else can do? And then you actually bring in either a tool or equipment or another person that stands right beside you in their place of genius that can actually help facilitate what you need. Yes. Community. Connection. But I was going to say, now okay. you're getting back to the community again. <laughs> exactly, right? Um, people say to me, how do you know all these people across the world? And I've often asked that of myself too. And it's it's not who I know. It's actually who knows me. And why do they know me? Because they know that I have one mission and it's not about me. It's about that bigger vision. And let me tell you, there are people across the world, Rich, that will have exactly the same vision as what you do. So you go out in search of. So the sooner that you actually let go of that scarcity mindset of I can't let people in because, you know, they might take my idea and actually move into who actually shares my actual vision, yes. then that's actually going to invite people in. You're going to attract the right people you then actually flow like water and it doesn't matter what bolster is in front of you. You move around it and you find the next person to stand right next to you. Well, and <laughs> the scarcity is you're afraid to share it. They might shoot you down. They might you think you're foolish or they might steal it, like you said. So you are limiting yourself to getting to the other people, whereas you say so well, the community aspect. 
most top tier, the Steve Jobs, the other people that are top, top tier, they collaborated. They didn't do this alone. They got with other people and they said, I got this idea. And they go, oh, I got that idea. And they began to do this, this, and this. And that's yes. where the genius is. But our mindset has to be, I got to be free enough to let myself out there and go do it, right? Exactly, exactly. You've got to be free and willing to actually share and most importantly to take others on the journey with you. Which is fun. When you get the right people and do that, the journey of collaboration. I tell people I'd love to be in a room full of dreamers. Put a bunch of whiteboards, a bunch of paper. Let me get in a room with dreamers like me and it's like crack cocaine i'm sorry to say it that way but it is addictive and it's fun because what comes out is far more creative collectively than what i could have done by myself that's a mindset to let yourself be in that space with other people a lot of people haven't been it comes back to what i said earlier risks right that simple that simple statement of don't jump off that tree has already inhibited somebody in thinking bigger because you know what if i actually do jump off that tree what am i doing i'm actually looking down i'm creating my own strategy first of all i've got to get up then i've got to actually mitigate my risks mm -hmm. how do i actually jump off this tree and not injure myself <laughs> that's what life is about yes. well and, and the other scarcity thought that often get, that, that it often comes out in conversation is it's just me. Hmm? No one's going to listen to just little old me. How, how, how do you respond where you've heard the idea, you know it's a good idea, and they're saying, but it's just me. That's real scarcity. <clears throat> but see, that's actually, so I have many situations where that's happened, but that's actually not me. That's their belief system. Right. So why am I buying into it? If they don't have the ability to see what I can see, why am I actually buying into their story? Because my story tells me something totally different. So it really is believing in yourself. That mindset also says, I'm okay. Yep. I can share. I had um, a situation, and I don't often ask for help, but I did. And it was of somebody that was quite close to me and I was sharing, you know, many years ago, this is actually what I want to do. And all that I want is for you to introduce me to, you know, these types of people because I think I can actually shift communities. And their response was, um, no, I don't understand. Why are you actually doing that? Well, this is the bigger picture. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. And the response was, yeah, I'm not quite sure that I can do that. And I walked away, Rich, going, I think I finally understand. <laughs> you know, if I don't need to convince people, they either see it or they don't. They want it for themselves or they don't. I can't want something for somebody else if they don't want it as much as I do. And that's okay. But as long as I actually know what it is that I want to do and I keep actually pursuing that, then I will actually get there. I've lived it. I've walked it. And I'm actually now taking others on that journey with me. So I know it works. Well, I want I people to stick a pin in that real quickly. Stick a pin in that. It doesn't matter if they believe you or don't believe you. It's are you going to go or not go? Whether they are on board or not, will you go or not go? It doesn't rely on them. No, exactly. But, and that's where mindset and belief is so important, Rich. Yes. Now, belief versus ego. Though some people are going to go, well, you're just puffed up. You're just all, all <laughs> about you. There's a difference between belief, self confidence, and the ego that you can't fit through the doorway, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, I do a lot of introspection um, and I can't say that there's no ego within me because if there isn't ego, then there's no drive. But my actual goal isn't about me. It never has been about me. It is actually about equipping others to become self-reliant. When I started up this business a few years ago, you know, I took a really long time. I sat in my own head 
and in my own heart and said, how am I going to do this so that I can actually walk my walk before I start walking my talk? Yes. So I actually set myself up as a social enterprise. And so I committed to 60% of my actual earnings being paid forward into running projects that I personally fund that will equip somebody else to actually be in a better place. I do that. I have done that for the last four years. And in fact, last year, I was excessively higher than that because <laughs> my dream is bigger than me. And that's the difference between ego and belief mm. and mindset. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So let me ask you, <laughs> is there anything that holds you back personally? Um. I have to check in on myself um, quite a lot because I'm human um, and I do have roadblocks. Um, I have been disheveled where I thought that, you know, others have actually been in it for the right reasons. So I would say that that temporary blockage comes up because of natural life and me being the person that I am. I'm a human being. But then I keep defaulting back to you're here for a bigger purpose. Mm -hmm. Stay true to yourself. Continuously go back to my core values, you know, ethics, integrity and respect and keep ploughing forward because the right people will come and the right people will join you on that journey. So I do know you've done some TED Talks, two of them, in fact. I'm curious, when it came to TED Talks, how many people – it's on their bucket list, but they'll never do it because, again, their mindset is, I can't stand on the red dot. <laughs> How was your TED Talk experience? Was, was, was that one of those things you wanted to do? You pushed yourself and you got out there and did it? Or was that one of those, I'm just going to go do it. It's not that hard. In the moment, of course, I have the butterflies. It's like, holy crap. I mean, I remember the second time when I was, because it was physical and I was in Ireland doing my second TED Talk because the first one was virtual. Um, it was in lockdown. So I remember at one stage the lights are shining in my eyes and I look down and I've gone, oh, my gosh, I'm on the edge of the red dot. What's going to happen? And I had to go, oh, step back, right? So it's, you know, everything goes through your mind. As they're you're running out. They're going to pull you back. They're going to staple your feet down. You can't move off the red dot. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but be a believer. Things actually cross your path for a reason. It's going to be a choice now. You've heard me say it. So you can never, ever unhear what I'm, you know, what I've just said and what I'm about to say. People cross your path. Things, opportunities cross your path for a reason. It's now a choice what you do with that. And that's a mindset. Because things Absolutely. come by us and gone. And then I'll just go, oh, wait a second. I should have done something about that. And we look in the rear view mirror instead of being open to, like you said, being conscious, being aware, being ready because sometimes the door will open up right in front of you and it literally is step through or miss the opportunity. Your mind's got to be ready, right? Exactly. You have to allow yourself the opportunity to be who you are. I have a, one of my favorite sayings is, is that when you let go of who you are, you then choose who you want to become. Nice. That's another, write that one down. <laughs> Put that down. That's a great one because it is about letting go and, again, being comfortable in your own skin, being able to know what you know, what you don't know. And I'm okay not knowing what I don't know hmm? because I know where I can land and what I can do it here, and I don't need to worry about that. And that's also mindset. I'm okay saying I'm a media broadcaster expert. I can't help it. I love the microphone. I love the camera. I love meeting new people. Yeah. I don't care about other things. That's okay, right? Yeah, absolutely. If that's what actually brings you joy, then stay in that place. You know, have that bigger dream that you have and then actually find others that actually want to play in their place of joy standing right next to you to get to that bigger thing. 
Values are so important to me. Every time values come up, I got to at least have a brief conversation about values. Yeah. People talk about mission and vision and all those things. And personally, I've worked with corporate. I, if you don't have values, none of the mission and vision really matters. The values set the compass, yeah. set the, the ethos. You talk about ethics, integrity, and respect. Those are three of the biggest ones. Can you explain why you stress values when it comes to mindset as well? Um, you know, it actually comes back to the core of who you are. If you can come back to your values in any given situation and actually say, yeah, that sits well with me, then you know you're on your right path. I was recently actually, you know, um, somebody that I um, coach said to me, I have this incredible opportunity. And then there was this niggle and they shared, you know, something and I said, well, I'm going to just tap into that. And I said, how, how does that sit with you? And, you know, they excused how it was okay. Yeah. And I said, so I'm going to ask you, what are your core values? And integrity was one of them. And I said, so if I place integrity into that situation, is there alignment? I and wish I, more people would do that. I really wish more people would stop and ask that question. And, of course, there isn't. And they sat back and went, nobody would have the courage to do that and to say that to me. To your point, Rich. And I said, but that's what I'm about, you know, and you didn't actually choose me and I didn't choose you because you wanted somebody that was just going to tell you what you wanted to hear. I'm here to actually help you grow professionally and personally. And it would be remiss of me to actually hear what you're not telling me and then bring that to the forefront. Well, and again, just by bringing up the values, bringing up the business side, it really is holistic. People are trying to just do one little thing, but the holistic idea, this really encompasses you. It is massive. You know, um, I know that I can actually get asleep at night because in – every decision that I made, I've really thought it through. You know, I've had situations where I've been able to be part of incredibly lucrative business transactions and I've walked away and people have said, what? And I said, it does not align with me. I do not actually get involved in a business just to make money. I'm involved to change people's lives. I will... Money will happen, believe me. Money, I'm a numbers person, believe me, right? <laughs> but if there is not alignment from a values perspective, there is no way that I will be involved. But if you want me to actually change the world and actually take you on that journey because your dream is there, guess what? I can do it, but I need to actually know that we are in alignment. And that's so important is that compass has got to be alignment. It, it really has to be. And it makes it so much easier when you begin to know and trust your values, your mindset, your community. It's so much easier to stay in alignment when you have that. Yeah. But you got to build it, right? Oh, that's doing work on yourself. Yes. So you you got to start from yourself first, <laughs> right? <laughs> And it takes time, Rich. I, I, you know, I'm not there yet. I'm still going. <laughs> right? Aren't we all? Yeah. yeah, right? It is being intentionally conscious around it. You know, every single day I sit in and I check in with myself. You know, was that actually the right decision? And, you know, I can make mistakes, but what I'll do is I'll actually own up to it and just go, you know what, I, I, that's been sitting quite heavy with me. And I overlooked one really critical thing. And you go back to it. Yeah. But most people just keep going. Right. It's okay to stop, pause, and make sure you're ready for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Kathy, this has been marvelous. And I know you have a free gift for those streaming along here today. You want to get, get your phone right now. You want to hit that QR code because you can have your own 30-minute consultation discovery call. What the heck is this thing, Kathy? <laughs> It's a let me blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I look, it's a let me blow your mind phone call. You want that, you need to hit the QR code, right? Yes.
<laughs> Let me listen to what you're not telling me. <laughs> oh, now that's a title of a book right there. <laughs> that's a title of a book right there. Uh, ah. <laughs> I get co-author rights on that, by the way. So get okay. the QR code, you get 30 minutes. And also, she is in Australia. There is a whole day ahead. There is a time zone. So don't worry, she will get to you. Uh, but, but you may have to be a little bit creative of your time of your call, right? Yes. Guess what? I'm in your future. <laughs> Take advantage of it. <laughs> That's another great one right there. There we go. Kathy, as, as we wind down here today, again, this has been great. The whole mindset, the whole idea. Again, and go back to my initial premise here. 23, 2023 was rough. Yeah. What would you say to, to let people know? It's okay, but you got to get the mindset again. How, how would you help them to launch 2024 with a better mindset so they can breathe and get moving again? So it's actually, I would say, the first thing that you need to do is actually just pause and sit in the moment and genuinely ask yourself, what is it that you genuinely want to do? And sit in that space and actually be okay with yourself. This is actually about unlocking your future call it out. Don't hold that in. Don't say, I can't do it. Actually sit down and say, what, what do I really want? Because when you discover that, that's when you're going to actually have a smile on your face, you know, like I do every single day, like you do, Rich, right? So pause and then give yourself permission. Kathy DeMarcus, it's been great to have you with us. And in the show notes, Make sure you grab the social link, connect with her. She's on LinkedIn, Facebook. She's everywhere. Believe me, her list is pretty long. Make sure you grab it in the show notes. And Kathy, thank you for taking the time to be on Rock Stage with us here tonight. Oh, thank you. You've been an incredible blessing. It's been a joy. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget, Rock the Stage is here every Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We bring another amazing guest on. We have another amazing conversation. And you can join the conversation. Join one of our premier priorities. Get involved in the chat conversation. Meet other people and, and be a part of what's going on with Rock to Stage. And it's all made possible by our amazing sponsors. Adavita Studios is helping you elevate your podcasts, your um, audio books, <laughs> and anything to do with audio. They will help you get out to the market faster and quicker because they're helping you connect your voice to the world. And Suspiciously Convenient Productions are our latest sponsor thank you for joining us as well they are also global they're in canada and they will help you with tv and media productions learn more about them by suspiciously convenient productions that's going to do it for this week for rock to stage show we're going to be back here again sunday night 7 p.m eastern time for another premiere party again authors writers directors global leaders as we go around the globe to bring the best people here join us again at 7 p.m eastern time for rock the stage show that's going to do it for this week on the Trigger Rich Bond Trigger. See you back next week, next Sunday night, for another great show. <laughs>